some way. Education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at LearnGrowInvestClub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at LearnGrowInvest. Welcome, welcome, and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to be, to, to be hosting this evening just a session on biblical finance and investing. I'm Renee McDonald. And this I'm is, Jermaine. <laughs> yes, and we are the co-founders of this community, Learn to Invest. So before we jump in, we'd just like to open with a word of prayer. So Lord, we thank you for this evening. We, we give you all honor, glory, and praise, mighty God. We thank you that we are able, that you have enabled us, Lord God, to be able to share this knowledge with your people. So Lord, as we go through this session, we just pray that hearts will be open to receive your word, Lord God, and that you will speak through us, that there will be less of us, Lord, and more of you. So have your way, Lord. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So we just want to acknowledge those of you who are here with us. Thank you so much for, for being in the chat already. That's very exciting for us. And um, please let us know where you're joining from. We see we have a few guests from Sonia Stewart Sage, and that is quite exciting. She is uh, our sister in Christ, and we're, we're happy um, for the growth that is happening over there on her channel. So if you do not know of Sonia Stewart just yet, be sure to check her out after this and we will we will um, surely share the link to her page. All right, so let's get started. If it is that you're wondering why would someone do um, a live <laughs> a session and a course on biblical biblical finance and investing, it's it's mainly because it has been impressed upon our hearts the importance of God's people knowing his true intention for wealth on the earth. We, we have learned um, many wrong things, and there are there are lots of wrong beliefs that have been that have been ingrained in us as, as we have grown up, whether you were raised in the church or near the church or just in a in a Christian country. Um, Typically, there are things that are said that are sometimes taken out of context and therefore leads to wrong beliefs and leads to the wrong heart posture when it comes to, to wealth. And so the Lord has impressed it upon us for us to share with you what he really intends for wealth. So who are we? We're going to get into that. We're going to get into the meat of that. But before we start, who are we? If you're new here, Learn, Grow, Invest is an online community focused on financial literacy and education. We are based in Jamaica, and we have a passion for building our nation by helping others to build wealth and become better stewards of their finances, all to the glory of God. So <clears throat> we are founded on our faith in Christ. And the, the scripture that has grounded us is, Deuteronomy 8, 18, which says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Now, you'll hear much more about that as we go into this session, um, but just keep that in mind. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And certainly, if this is of interest to you, then we welcome you to follow us on social media. We are on most social media platforms. YouTube is, is filled with many of our videos already. And we also welcome you to join our communities. We have communities actively on Telegram, certainly, <laughs> on LinkedIn and on Facebook. Now, we'd like to share with you as well a few of our, our values. We believe in biblical soundness. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, it speaks about handling the word of truth correctly. So we hold, we hold on to that. We also 
believe in diligence. Hebrews 6.12 <clears throat> admonishes us not to become sluggish, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Generosity, Philemon 1.6, speaks about putting into action the generosity that comes from our faith. Integrity, doing what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And that is Proverbs 21.3. And community, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. That is Proverbs 27.17. So those are our, our core values here at Learn, Grow, Invest, and everything else that we do comes out of that. So I would have already invited you to join our communities. And with that, we're going to go right now into, into what you're here for, <laughs> right? So we just want to be clear that the scriptures shared in these sessions are just a subset of all that the Bible has to say about money and wealth. The, the word of God is so rich and it truly gives us all that we need for life and godliness. Now, if we were to go through all the scriptures, we would be here till only Lord knows when. <laughs> so we have, we have pulled out a few scriptures um, that speak to the the particular areas that we will be addressing today. And we believe that through God's guidance, this will this will set the foundation for, for you as you seek to be godly stewards of wealth. So I mentioned earlier that there are some wrong beliefs some misguided beliefs, mis misused and misunderstood, misunderstood scriptures um, that kind of led us to why we're, we're doing this, this session today. And just to mention a few of them, right? First Timothy 6.10 is probably one of the most quoted and most misused scriptures. It speaks to the love of money being the root of all sorts of evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pounds. Often that is used to say that we are not to have money as Christians. But again, that is not what the, the word is actually saying. That's not what the scripture is actually saying. And we will, we will get into what the truth of, of that scripture actually is. That, that is talking about greed that is talking about making money an idol in your life, that is talking about replacing God on the throne of your heart with money. And naturally, if that is your, if that is your posture, if that is where your mindset is, then you will wander away from the faith because it is no longer about God, it is about you and money. So it is not that God is saying, do not have money. He is saying, do not dethrone me for money. Another one, <clears throat> another one is Matthew 6, 24, which speaks to serving God and not money. It says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And again, the very thing that I, that I just said is about who is on the throne of your heart, right? You, you truly cannot serve both. God must remain front and center. God must remain on the throne of your heart. And then you use the money to accomplish what it is that he's calling you to do with it. Money is a resource. And finally, we'll just touch on Luke 18, 25, which says, the, for it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, right? And I think this is the one that many persons will be like, man, so I, I can't be rich. I shouldn't be rich because then I can't get into heaven. Yeah. But what we, a, a lot of persons have missed, and again, we say it is misused because this is only a piece. When we are reading scripture, we must read it in context. We must read what comes before, what comes after. And what comes after this is Peter asking Jesus, so who then can, 
can enter heaven, who can get into heaven? And Jesus' response is, what is impossible with man is possible with God, which means that if you are indeed a rich man, if it is that you have money and you are walking with God, then you are still able to get in heaven because you are with God. So it is about it is about understanding where your heart should be. Everything that we will talk about this evening comes back to that, where our hearts should be. Who is on the throne of our heart? Must be God above all else. All right. So, well, we, we also just wanted to, to say that we will take questions at the, the very end. You see it here. What we will be covering today, we will be going into all introduction, um, tithing and first fruits, dealing with debt, budgeting, investing, generosity, and then we'll pull it all together for you. And then we're going to Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will we will get to them afterwards. And um, I hope you're ready because <laughs> we are. Have your notebooks out, guys. Have your, have your Bibles ready. We are ready to go. All right. So we spoke about some, some misused scriptures, misguided. And, and abused scriptures. But let's talk about the, the truth about money, right? The three that we want to share with you today. It's God's money. Psalm 21, one and several other scriptures tell us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It all belongs to him, all of it. And therefore, when we get all caught up about our money, just try, try to bring it back a little bit and remember that it is indeed God's money, not our own. Secondly, God wants us to be good stewards of money. Not lovers of money, but stewards of money. In Matthew 25, 21, Jesus says, in, when, when speaking, when telling the parable of the talents, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. There is a reward for good stewardship. And thirdly, our faith must be in God, not in wealth. And we reference 1 Timothy 6, verse 17 for this. Instruct those, and this is Paul writing to Timothy to speak to the church. Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to set their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. All right? So God does not want us to be deprived. He says he will provide us with all things to enjoy. But we have a role to play in that we must be obedient to his word and we must be living as holy, living holy and righteous unto him. All right? So, what is stewardship? The Holman Bible Dictionary defines it as utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. And when, when it says all resources, it means all <laughs> resources, including money or talents or, or gifts or time. or time, all resources to the glory of God. So, when we think about stewardship, the, the first parable that comes to mind is often the parable of the talents, right? Matthew 25, 14 to 30. Now, if you're not familiar with it, we, we did a, a few highlights just to speak particularly, that, that speak particularly to stewardship, right? But we do encourage you to read it for yourself. Everything that we are sharing with you here is in the Bible. So we do encourage you to read it and read it in context for yourself. So the highlights. 
In verse 15, it speaks about each of the three persons being given talents according to their ability. One was given five, one was given two, one was given one. And this in itself tells us that it's, it's not about an equal distribution. We are given different abilities. We're given different talents. The, the apportionment is according to our ability, right? The, the second point is that the first two, when they were entrusted with the five and the two talents, they went out and they actively traded with their allotment. The third, the third person who got the one talent, he hid it. He did nothing with it. He, he put it away. The first two were able to double what they were given. So the one with five came back with 10. The one with two came back with four. And they were commended, well done, good and faithful servant. And the third, though, because he did it, because he did nothing with what he had, he had been entrusted with, he was reprimanded. And we're not going to go into how he was reprimanded, but trust me, guys, <laughs> it is a proper and it's a serious and proper reprimanding that he was given for not utilizing what what was entrusted to him so likewise whatever it is that is entrusted to us we must be we must be active stewards of it to provide a return to the master verse 29 of the same matthew 25 says for to everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts from god and has used them wisely more will be given and he will be richly supplied so that he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, because he has ignored or disregarded his blessings and gifts from God, even what he does have will be taken away. And oftentimes we, we wonder why it is that, that so many of God's people are not thriving financially some of it is because we're not doing our part some of it is because we have we have allowed the the deception and the lies to take us off the path that god has intended for us we have not been stewarding stewarding well and therefore it has been taken away the word of god says that that is the consequence so whatever whatever the gift whatever the talent whatever the the financial the, the financial means you have been given we encourage you to steward them well my promise is that once you steward it well you will be given more indeed so when we speak of stewardship there are five five areas that we will be touching on in in this session and they're tithing tithing and first fruits and budgeting debt management investing and generosity. So, what does the Bible say about each of these things? What does the word say? We will we will do a deep deep dive into each of them, but just as an overview, and if you're taking notes, you can take note of of these scriptures here. Tithing and first fruits. Malachi three ten speaks to to tithing. Proverbs 3, 9 speaks to first fruits. <clears throat> Investing, the parable of the talent, it, it's Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. We kind of did a highlight of that just now, but there is more. There's so much to glean from that one passage, and we're going to go into the investing part a little bit later on. Debt, Proverbs 22, 7, and Proverbs 6, 1 to 6. Now, debt, debt management, dealing with debt is such a major thing in, in this time for so many people. Um, you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that, that section. Budgeting, Proverbs 27, 23 to 27, and Luke 14, verse 28. And finally, generosity. Proverbs 19, 17, and Philemon 1, 6. So, we're going to start with tithing and first fruits. And here, you'll hear Germany's <laughs> voice for a bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Renee. So uh, really a pleasure to be here, as Renee said before. 
So we're going to talk about tithing and first fruits. And we started here because, of course, we don't want you to miss this very important biblical principle. All right. So we see tithing mentioned a couple of times within the Bible. So what I'm going to do here is mention the reference, speak about the scripture that 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 highlights the principle. We're going to we're going to give you some key points from the principle. Then we're going to talk about um, some some. I'm going to talk about application, right? So Malachi 3.10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if you, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. I love that verse, right? Next one, Proverbs 3.9, honor the Lord with your wealth and from the first of all your produce. I'm going to talk about them separately. Tithing is essentially giving a tenth of your income, and first fruits is giving the Lord essentially the first of what we call your harvest. Now, in biblical times, it was used sort of for you know agriculture in in that way. But for us, since you know, like unlike any of us are farmers here, we're 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 talking about our income, our you know any anything that can be considered a harvest for us. All right. So let's let's talk about some of the principles that we see here. And tithing comes comes down to, to this. It's about putting God first. Right? He wants us to value him above all else and trust him to provide. And that's in Matthew 6 33, which says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and Psalm 37, 4. We look at examples in the Bible of tithing. We see Abraham giving a tithe, and we see Jacob um, in Genesis 28. 20 to 22. I wanted to read that scripture. Um, do we have it? Just one sec, guys. I wanted to read that scripture because I, I thought it was so so powerful what Jacob said. So, uh, so it says, Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me on this journey that I that I take and will give me food to eat and garments to wear and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. This stone which I have set upon a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. That's essentially speaking about giving a tithe, right? So Jacob said, you know, if the Lord does what he does, right, take care of him, feed him, you know, bring him back safely, he's going to give the Lord a tenth, right? Point three, God commands us to be generous so that we can fulfill his purposes with his money. And this is our founding scripture, Deuteronomy 8, 18. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And finally here, God looks at our heart. So when persons will ask us, do we tithe gross or do we tithe net? You know, um, all of those questions, right, comes down to what is our heart posture. Right, that's it's really between you and the Lord, and how much of you you're willing to give to Him in that manner. Right. In terms of first fruits, now, so as I said, it's not the same as tithing, even though we group them together. First fruits is now. Um, let's 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 look at it as an opportunity to give above our tithe. Right, tithe is something that we do monthly from our income from our, our salary, you know, if we're self-employed, from whatever we pay ourselves, etc., it is honoring the, what a first fruits would be honoring the Lord with the first of your harvest. So if it is that you, um, you start a new business, maybe it's your first sale, maybe it's your first month's income, whatever it is that is considered the first of that, you know, quote unquote harvest is what you'd be paying as first fruits. I've shared a testimony before that for me, whenever I start a new job, I give my first paycheck, my first paycheck in full as first fruits offering. Right, so that's one way in which you can can look at it. Um, when we were researching this, we saw where that's that idea of a first fruits offering is what made Abel's offering acceptable to God. It says in Genesis 4, 4, Abel on his part brought of the firstlings of his flock and their, and their fat portions, and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, right? So Abel gave his first, right? He gave his best, and so the Lord accepted it. 
And in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 7, you know, Paul says, you know, I planted, Apollos watered, but God provided the increase, right? So the, um, the idea is that you're trusting the Lord with your first, and then you, you, you trust him to bless everything else, all right? Let us know if you have any questions about that in the chat, and we'll get to it whenever we take questions. So in terms of applying these two principles that we've just mentioned, you really want to pray and ask the Lord how to approach it and to give it the right heart posture, right? We we have had seasons where the Lord has, has called us to tithe more than 10%. Um, you know, so it's really for us to see where the Lord is calling us to in that particular season. So don't just think that it's limited to 10. Some persons actually say it should be 10 minimum, right? But we're not going to get into that this evening. You want to also budget post tithe. If you try to, to plan for all your expenses before you tithe, then you may not be able to consistently do it. So we think that you should look at your income pay your tithe first, and then you plan for the remainder of your income. That's to us a way that to, to ensure that you, you consistently do it and you are putting God first when it comes to your money, right? So an, an example here for, for a tithe, your, your, mo your gross monthly income is 100,000, for example. You would tithe 10% of that, which is $10,000 and you'd give it first, as we said, if this was a first fruits offering, you would give the entire 100 because it would either be the start of the year or the first income for that, that job. Let's talk about debt. So um, we're going to, to, to cover what the Bible says about debt. Uh, Proverbs 22, 7 says, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower becomes the lender's slave. Now, debt is something that has been extremely challenging across the world, right? Christian and, and non-Christian. It is something that it's, 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 it can be very hard to get out of. It's important, though, to understand what the Bible says about it and so that you can navigate it in the right way. So this is the first scripture. Let's look at another one. Next one is Proverbs 6, which speaks about being a, a guarantor. And we found this very interesting. It says, my son, if you have become shorty, that's guaranteed a debt or obligation for your neighbor. If you have given your pledge for that debt of a stranger or another outside your family, do this now, my son, and release yourself from the obligation since you have come into the hand of your neighbor. Go humble yourself and plead with your neighbor to pay his debt and release you. Mm -hmm. Right? It's crazy. And it says here that um, you know, you want to be free from that, right? You want, you don't want to be in that position of standing collateral for someone else, because then if they, if they default on that debt, you have to honor it. That's what you would have signed to. So that's what Proverbs 6 was speaking about. We say, if you must borrow, be sure to repay as you have committed to. You see that in Psalm 37, 21 and Matthew 5, 37. And finally, you want to avoid debt where possible because you are now obligated to the lender and it restricts your, your options. You know, imagine trying to, to leave your job or being, you know, frustrated in your job and wanting to leave, but you can't because you have debt. You have obligations that you need to meet every month. It, 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 it limits you, right? So that's how you want to think about debt. Now, we thought it important to, to kind of distinguish this idea of good debt between Good debt or bad debt. So that's what we've done here. Good debt is used to acquire assets, right? And we know we know we know what an asset is. So good debt can can be used to make investments. So a lot of persons ask us that question: Can I use debt to invest? Yes, if it is being used to acquire an asset. It becomes bad debt though if it puts you above your means. It, it, it becomes bad debt if it costs more than what it is used to acquire, right? So you want to, to consider what we call the total cost of ownership. Look at how much you're paying, how, how much you're going to repay in terms of that loan, um, in terms of that, 
that credit card that maybe you're not able to pay in full each month, you want to understand um, to um, you you want to understand what you're really paying back, right? So one of the things we like to do if it is that you're taking a loan, let's say that you're taking a loan for a car that is valued at a million dollars, and you the terms of the loan state that you are repaying maybe two point five or three million dollars. What, what you need to ask yourself is if that car is worth the total amount that you're repaying for it over that period. That's that's one one interesting way to look at it. So I think these notes on good debt versus bad debt, something that, that you should think about and see how how that you know goes to the particular situation that you're in, right? And of course, you want to enter into it prayerfully as well. So I have that as a first point here. Consider any debt prayerfully right pray about it ask the lord his will because sometimes there is an opportunity for you to acquire that asset without debt but sometimes we we aren't you know being mindful to listen to the lord and how he would be leading us in that way as we saw in proverbs 6 you don't want to co-sign on debt for others we've seen situations where persons you know they'll they'll you see them all the time, you're, you're on good terms, you co-sign for them, they're not able to pay, you can't get them on the phone, you haven't seen or heard from them for months, and now you now have the obligation to repay that debt because you'd have signed on as guarantor, right? And finally, you want to live within your means, consider the use of credit cards, you know, payday loans, etc. A credit card is, is a very, very easy way to live above your means. So there are good ways to use credit cards. It's something that we use personally, but you have to manage it well. You want to ensure that you have a reasonable limit for your credit card. You want to be sure that you can pay it in full each month so that you don't incur interest. And so you want to you know, be able to manage it well, but of course, be mindful that you are not putting yourself over your means by having these facilities. All right, and for, for those who may be in debt, you know, there are some steps that, that we recommend that you take. Make a list of all your debts, including your personal loans, credit cards, etc. Every single debt that you have outstanding, make a list. A lot of persons mentally can't face this if they're in debt. They don't know how much they owe, right? Um, so you want to start with that list. So list the amount owed, the monthly payments, the interest rate, and the due date because you, you it may it might have been a $50,000 loan but you're repaying maybe you know $10,000 a month for the next year you're really repaying $120,000 that's the amount that you want to have in mind because that's the amount that you need to pay for the loan to be cleared so you want to be mindful of this in terms of clearing those debts now two strategies we recommend you look at you have the the debt snowball which, which says, you know, you take care of your smallest debt first. And then, you know, as, as you clear the smaller debts, use that money to pay on the bigger ones and so on. So it creates that this snowball effect. Or you have the debt avalanche, which says you clear the largest ones first and then you work your way down. All right. So these are just some short applicable steps that you can take if it is that you're in debt currently. All right, so I don't think we necessarily need a break just yet. So let us just press on. Yeah, we're a little ahead of schedule. We're ahead of schedule. <laughs> That's good. That means we have more time for Q&A. All right. So I'll hand over to Renee, the budgeting. Thank you. All right. So budgeting. We wanted to start with Proverbs 27, 23 to 27 which speaks about knowing the state of your flocks. It's, it says, know the state of your flocks and put your heart into caring for your herds, for riches don't last forever. And the crown might not be passed to the next generation. After the hay is harvested and the new crop appears and the mountain grasses are gathered in, your sheep will provide wood for clothing and your goats will provide the price of a field and you will have enough goat's milk for yourself, your family, and your servant girls. And Luke 14, 28 says, <clears throat> for which one of you 
when he has when he wants to build a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it now the principles the takeaways from those two scriptures one is proper money management leads to gain and provision for the future and that is coming from the proverbs 27 scripture when it when it speaks about knowing the state of your flocks that's that that means knowing what you have understand what it is that that you have what you don't have it it speaks about managing that well caring for it with with your heart so that so that you will have what is needed in the future again it, it speaks about having enough for your for yourself for your family for and and for those who serve you so that that planning that budgeting that management of your of your funds leads to gain and provision secondly actively plan and work towards stewarding well the the, the verse says that the crown might not be passed to the next generation it's not an automatic thing right i'm kind of going to point through here generational wealth is not automatic not it's not a guarantee that the wealth that you generate now that you build now will, will pass on it doesn't just automatically happen it's something that requires effort it requires intentionality right so take have have that mindset of taking action of 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 managing your your finances well so that you have a greater chance of of building and passing on that generational wealth and fourthly create a budget before you begin spending and that is from the Luke 14 scripture and it, it speaks about it speaks about building that tower if you're if you're building a tower won't you sit and calculate the cost to see if you can afford it. It continues, that, that passage continues to say, because if you don't and you're not able to complete it, then you'll be laughed at, you'll be ridiculed. People will think that you just didn't know what you were doing. And honestly, if it is that we're, we're seeking to represent God and represent God well, that is that is not his, his character. He's not to be ridiculed. So we, to need to come into alignment with that. So um, <clears throat> that is about creating the, the budget, creating the spending plan before you start to spend. And whether you whether you do that, um, how often you do that is really it is, is really going to come down to you and God. But we do recommend doing an annual budget. And reviewing at least monthly so the the annual budget will help you to identify your spending trends will help you to identify which months you spend more money um, which which months you spend less money when you are able to actually shift some of your expenditure to better balance to better balance your affairs and when you do your monthly review that that will allow you to to make adjustments based on what has actually happened in the past so let's look at the application of the this we're talking about now budgeting one identify your current state know what you own and what you owe what are your assets what are your liabilities what 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 are the things that are earning you money what are the things that are taking money away from you what are your expenses? What are what is your income? Like I, I've said it in four different ways, so I, I'm hoping it's very clear. Understand what your current financial state is. Secondly, take time to plan ahead and work out your budget. It may seem a little frustrating sometimes. It may be a little discouraging sometimes because you may you may plan your budget, you know, you have all your income sources and then you do all your expenses and you realize that there's a negative and you're like, where is where is this gap coming from? How is this gap going to be filled? It may be a little discouraging, but do it anyway. That planning ahead is what enables you to, to 
call on God <laughs> and enables you to, to ask specifically, to, to pray specifically, and, and to see and be able to testify of his provision when he does it. So take that time um, to plan ahead. And thirdly, track your expenses and make adjustments as needed. So oftentimes, when, when persons speak about budgeting, they, they talk about what they plan to spend for the month, but there's hardly any discussion about what you actually spend for the month. And that is what the, the tracking allows you to, to see. Now, you have a, a spending plan to, to say you, you plan to spend $10 on food for this month, but did you actually spend $10? Or did you spend $10 in the first week? Right. So being able to, to track your expenses enables you enables you to see where you are going off track. It en enables you to make a course correction mid-month, at the start of the month, based on how things are going. And also, sometimes, sometimes um, it may be that an emergency happens, something unexpected happens, and your spending is, is thrown up. How can you then make the adjustments? So tracking your expenses as you go along will be very important. Now, in a, in a practical sense, when it comes to budgeting, just easy three points to remember. List all your monthly income and expenditures. Then identify your gaps and prioritize your expenses. Meaning, if it is that you have a shortfall, if, you, if your budgeted expenditure is more than your budgeted income, then something, is, something has to go, something has to come off the list. But how do you know what comes off the list? Prioritize your expenses. What is the most important thing? So you're, you're, now, you're now putting them in order from the most important to the least important expense. And then you can decide, okay, these things at the bottom can come off and you trim until you get to a point where you are now balancing between your income and your expenditure. And, and this is why I would have mentioned that you want to tithe first, because especially if you're not able to be, if, if there is currently a deficit, you want to still show that you're trusting the Lord with your finances. So you tithe first. And we have seen, I mean, we can share our testimony at the end if there's time, yeah. but you want to you want to honor the Lord first, right? We, we're, we're talking in the, in the comments about whether it's gross or net, et cetera. We'll get to that at the end. The most important thing for us and, and what we see the word say is that you do do tithe. And so, you know, you want to just be sure that you build that discipline so that just in case there, there are certain months you may have to make other sacrifices, we don't want the sacrifice to be what we're tithing. Right, absolutely. And the third point about budgeting is to, to choose how you will how you will track your spending. What is most what is what is most practical for you? Is it an app? And there, there are many apps that will allow you to budget and track your expenditure right there on your phone. So so you can do it as you are as you've paid your supermarket bill, you can just enter it in, into the app to say, okay, you've spent this. And then that will also um, some of those apps also show you your variance, you know, how much you have left for the month. And so that helps to gauge how you spend moving forward, right? Or you could just use a regular spreadsheet if, if you prefer to just do one day out of the week, enter all your expenses, see where you are at the end of that week. That works too. Find what, what rhythm works for you and do it. The, the important thing, it doesn't matter how, like which application you choose to, to use, even if it's pen and paper. It just matters that you do it, okay? So, back to Jermaine on the on the investing okay, side of okay. things. Okay, all right, and guys, we really do love the the questions that are coming up, and these are real questions. I don't want anybody to feel like their 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 perspective is wrong or right. We will discuss it at the end, and the things that are being shared 
are the things that we all have to process, right? Yes. So it's not, these aren't easy things to go through because one thing may seem, you know, logical to us, but then as we go through scripture after scripture, we may have a different perspective on it. So I want you guys to continue to share it. And as I said, at the end, when we're going through Q&A, we'll kind of go through all the comments and just share our own thoughts on it as well, okay? All right, so let's talk about investing. So would have laid the, the foundation for this through the parable of the talents. I believe it is very clear that, that, that investing is something that we should do. And, you know, so the next part I wanted to add to this is Ecclesiastes 11. Verse 2, it says, divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. All right, so we, we, we want to pull two things from this. One, we want to look at multiple streams of income. And two, we want to have and ensure that our investments are diversified. Right. Um, it would be nice to have seven or eight streams of income, <laughs> but I, do, I mean, we have to get to a certain point to get there. But we, we recommend you start with at least one or two things that are, you know, easy to get off the ground, won't, won't require as much time from us in terms of management. You know, you know, most of us have families, children, you know, demanding jobs. So having more than a handful of streams of income maybe just be too much for us but we actually have a system that we use personally where when we get to a certain point we build up one income stream get it to a point of automation then we move to another one and that and that we believe is 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 a way to go about it right it's not like we're trying to start up seven or eight streams of income at the same time okay so the principles that we want to take from from those from those two scriptures, one, we want to provide a return to our master for what he has given us for the furtherance of the kingdom and for the good of others, right? That's why we're we're investing. You know, the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That speaks about generational wealth. It can't become generational if, if, if it's not wealth in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Proverbs 20, 21 speaks about investing diligently, not being in a haste to, to develop wealth. So that's something we want to be mindful as well. You know, let's not rush. We, we might have spent a lot of years in debt, might have spent a lot of years struggling. So we really want to just get as much money as we can. But the Bible speaks about being patient, being diligent. And the idea behind diligence is that it's something that you're focused on being consistent you're not trying to 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 hit a home run you're you you're just going for singles right and finally generate multiple income streams and be diversified in those sources we spoke about that before we found that that's a very good way to ensure that for example if we if we invest in the stock market and that's not going well then maybe we have income from real estate if that's not going well Maybe, maybe we can't find a tenant, then at least we have some services that we provide outside of that that can bring in income. So we have we have multiple streams of income and it's something that we, we greatly encourage so that we're not in this position where we if, if we are struggling to get by, then sometimes we find ourselves in a position doing things we're not supposed to do just to get by, right? Um, Right. So application, again, we, we wanted to focus on how we can practically put these things into in into our lives. Ask God for wisdom. Proverbs 2, 6 tells us that we can ask the Lord for wisdom. And in the parable of talents, it spoke about, you know, the master said, at least you could have given it to the bankers and get me some interest. At the very least, you could have done that. So if you don't know how to invest, get a financial advisor. Next, you want to maintain high moral standards for your investments. Proverbs 13, 11 speaks about, you know, um, a certain type of scheme or a certain type of way in which we, we acquire wealth. You, you want to stay away from that, right? And we also think it's important here to ensure that the things we invest in are of a high moral standard. It would be pleasing to the Lord for us to invest 
in that company or in that product or in that service. You want to, to ensure that you have a high moral standard as it relates to your investments. And finally, as we said, you want to diversify your investments. If you don't understand what diversification is, we actually have other videos on our YouTube channel to speak about that very same thing. And again, if you have questions, post them in the chat, we'll take them all at the end. In terms of what you can use in, in terms of a system to invest, we, we created what we call the learn methodology. So feel free to write this down or, or take a screenshot. L stands for looking at your current financial position. We spoke about doing a budget, calculating your net worth. That's what this is. E, you want to know, establish your goals. We have a video on setting financial goals on our channel. Feel free to check that out. If you have a goal to pay for university or to buy a car or to buy a house, that goal has a monetary value. Then based on that monetary value, you can look at your income see how much you need to now invest and, and, and achieve to be able to purchase that home or that car, All right? So that's what is, is in that second stage. A is assessing your options in terms of the different asset classes. So based on my goal, if I'm trying to achieve something in six months, maybe the stock market would be better than real estate because real estate would take maybe at least a year and a half, two years to turn over. Right, so you want to choose the right, right investment to suit the goal that you have. And after you've, you've looked at these asset classes, you're going to narrow it down, right? If you know about four different types of investments, you, you're not going to pursue all four. You're going to, to shortlist one or two, and then you're going to research those now in depth because you don't want to just buy any stock. You don't want to just buy any investment property. You want to research the area. You want to understand the company. And so the, this R phase is going to be in-depth research. Speak to those who are familiar with the industry. Get guidance. You know, enter into it prayerfully. And then once you've decided, you want to normalize investing regularly. We recommend allocating a portion of your income each month to invest. Right? It could be the stock market. It could be in your own business. It could be, you know, saving towards buying your first, you know, real estate property. It doesn't matter. You want to normalize investing regularly. And now we get to generosity. So we do see that there has been some talk about generosity in the chat, and we love it, right? Thank you guys for sharing. We really do appreciate it. And please do continue to share your thoughts. Um, we're here to learn from each other. We, we said it earlier, Aaron iron sharpens iron right so um, let us continue to to share and educate each other with respect and love of course right so generosity <clears throat> proverb 1917 says who is gracious and lends a hand to the poor lends to the lord and the lord will repay him for his good deed the lord will repay him for his good deed right um, another scripture is, is Philemon 1 6, which says, and I'm praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. We as believers in Christ experience the good things of Christ, right? And coming out of that faith should be generosity to others. So it's, it's literally faith in action. So when, when, we, are, when we are saying that we're, we're Christians, we should also be showing that we're Christians by being generous um, to others. Now, there's a scripture that we did not put on the slide here, but it, it resonates very strongly with, with us. There, when, when Jesus speaks about separating the sheep from the goats, you know, he... He says, you, I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was hungry and you did not feed me. And these persons who were the goats in the scenario were saying, when, when did we ever see you naked and not clothe you? Or when did we ever see you hungry and not feed you? And Jesus's re reply was, was telling them essentially paraphrasing here guys <laughs> was essentially telling them that 
when they saw the poor in need and they did not give, they did not address them, they did not provide for them, he, they were doing that unto him. And so that is something that we, we can't skim over, we can't forget that Jesus himself looks at how we are generous, how we treat others, right? So the principles that we take away from, from those scriptures are, one, to care for those in need. It honors God. It honors God, and he repays us for that. And who can repay you any better than, than God, our creator, the one who owns it all? Who? Secondly, providing for your family honors God. No, we didn't put this scripture on the screen, but it is 1 Timothy 5, verse 8, and it says, if anyone fails to provide for his own, and especially for those of his own family, he has denied the faith by disregarding its precepts and is worse mm. than an unbeliever who fulfills his obligation in these matters. So, again, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think about that one. <laughs> again, yeah. it's it's significant, guys, when when the word of God is telling us that if we do not provide for our, and, and this is talking about our families now, if we do not provide for our families, we are worse than unbelievers who do provide for their families. That um, we we must we must take it, it seriously and provide for them generously. Third, giving generously shows our faith in God, and that's Philemon one six. I've said it so many times already. Um, and in Second Corinthians nine seven to eight. It says, you must, you must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Mm -hmm. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So give generously to others and God will give generously to you. Now, I just want to be clear here. We're not saying that you're giving with the intention of getting back. Because the truth is, you don't know what you're getting back. You don't know how God will generously provide for you. It may not be in the same way that you have generously provided for someone else. So, so just understand when, when it says you must decide in your heart how much to give and give it give it willingly not in a response to pressure mm -hmm. you know um something that that is said at our church every week when it comes to giving of our tithes and offerings is that we give by faith not by force so it is not from a place of pressure to say you must give no 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 it is about it is about <clears throat> you deciding in your heart, based on what the Lord is impressing upon you, what God is saying to you, you moving in obedience to that and giving willingly, giving generously, all right? So on the application side of things, we just want you to remember to seek opportunities to give consistently to others, meaning add it to your budget, like even add it to your budget to ensure that it, it's remembered. You know, you don't you don't forget it. You don't say, oh, I won't bother to give this month. But seek, seek out those opportunities and give without the expectation of reciprocity. The, the person who you give to may not give, excuse me, may not give back to you. The, the scripture that we just read in 2 Corinthians says that God will repay you right? He will repay you. So, so it's not about what, what man can give you, but what God has in, has in store for you. Yeah. So, um, I, I know we said we'll take questions at the end, but I think it's important here since we're almost at the end, when we're giving generously, we are not 
this is separate from us saying you are to enable someone who maybe has a bad habit. Right. Giving generously at times is not always about money. There are times when persons need your time. There are times when persons need your help. There are times when persons need your intervention. And in some cases, I've seen where some persons would actually prefer to give money instead of time. Right. Right. How, how you know, there may be situations where somebody needs to speak with you and ask, you know, would would call you and you're maybe a little irritated at that you'd prefer to, okay, what do you want? Give them money so that they leave you alone where maybe spending some time with them would actually minister to them more than you giving them money, right? Absolutely. So we're not saying enable those who have bad habits, right? There are, there are opportunities. If somebody is struggling with money, helping them budget, helping them invest, helping them understand the decisions that they need to make regarding their money, is something that will help them right. that is being generous as well because you're giving them off your time mm -hmm. right yes um and yeah. and i'll just i'll just hop on that to, to say that our time is is even more valuable than money because our time when we when we use it when we give it there is no getting it back you know you can reverse the clock but money when you give it you can make more and and so our, our time is valuable and i think because persons often look at their time as being so valuable they'd rather give the money so that they can use their time how they how they choose to use their time however however um when when it is that it is impressed upon us to give our time instead of the money let us seek to be obedient in that yeah and so, so obviously the question comes up here, okay, somebody's asking me for money. I don't know how they're going to use it. They don't seem very responsible to me. Is it bad stewardship to give them money mm -hmm. if I don't know what they're going to do with it? Um, I mean, you, if it is that, so above all, if the Lord is leading you to do something, you won't always have all the answers, right? So if it is that the Lord says, give, you want to prayerfully consider it, talk to the Lord about it, get as much as the Lord is, is willing to reveal to you in that moment, you take that step of faith and you go. But I believe if it is that, um, if for example, we are unsettled, if there's information that we have that changes the scope of the request, Maybe we can see counsel on it. Maybe we speak to our pastor. Maybe we get, you know, um, you know, insight from 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 others. The Bible speaks about getting godly counsel, right? So if I speak to a friend, okay, I'm working with this person. They're asking me for some money, but from what I can tell, they're using the money to do something that isn't necessarily going to put them in a better position. What should I do, right? So in some cases, for example, if it is that somebody says, "I need money to pay a bill." and you don't know for certain that they'll use the money to pay that bill, ask them for their account number and pay the bill for them. Right. right? Like, so there is some, sometimes ways you can, you can help them practically, but we, we, we can't control what a person chooses to do after we've decided to give them. We'll never know. Right. And, and the, the other part of that is that when, when we give, it's not about it's it's not about what the other person will do with it. It's about our heart in giving. So we know that God looks at the heart. God looks at our heart, right? So are you are you giving generously? Are you giving willingly? Are you giving cheerfully? These are the things that matter. It doesn't seriously matter um, to you what the person does with the money why because they have to give an account for themselves to god they're the ones who have to give that account and i know that it can it can feel frustrating when when you feel like man i've been tricked or you know this person was was they said was they were not genuine, do one thing, but they didn't yeah. right i was deceived and, and that can be frustrating that can that can hurt you a little bit right but vengeance is mine says the lord i will repay <laughs> right so don't don't take it on don't take it on to yourself to say this person needs to 
do exactly what they said they're going to do with the money that that part of it is between them and god what is your responsibility is to be obedient if the lord has said give just give and i'll close out here to say and this is something we say to persons it's not ungodly to say no if you're not if you believe that the lord is telling you not to help in that particular situation then don't right so it's it's sometimes persons may need to get to a certain point before they turn to god for themselves and ask for help right because sometimes now they may they may use it as an opportunity for an out right so i mean it it's there's no one size fits all here you have to really take each situation in its own context and as we said it really comes down to what the lord may be trying to do in you in the situation and with that other person so that's what i think you should factor in before you make your your ultimate decision right and god is god is very efficient he will work on all, all everybody involved at the same at time, the same time. Yeah. right all right guys so we're gonna go into the putting it together section now then we'll take a short break and come back for the q a yep all right, so we, we've kind of shared five principles here. So we want to just kind of give you, kind of put it all together so in a way that it makes sense, right? Um, so you want to commit yourself and your finances to God in prayer. That's where all of this starts, guys. We, we don't want you to just take what we're saying here, listen to what sounds favorable to you, and then run with it. We want you to talk to the Lord and ask him how you should commit to yourself and your money to him one of the, the prayers that we often pray is that lord we want you to fully use us in the way that gives you the most glory and we want us we, we want to be in a place where we're not thinking about the dollars and cents when it comes to a decision right sometimes we ourselves in the name of stewardship may may not spend freely when the lord could be calling us to Right? So you want to commit yourself and your finances to God in prayer. You want to write down your strategy for money management. Right? You're going to, you're going to know, I ask the Lord to say, okay, Lord, how should we you know, manage our money? You know, what should we invest in? How should we invest? Write down that strategy. We saw, I wish I remember exactly where in Genesis, but it spoke to you know, Jacob devising a strategy as to how to, to manage um you know the animals that led to him making you know a, just amassing a lot of wealth right that's god given strategy right mm -hmm. so write down that strategy for money management write down that strategy for building wealth pray over it and pursue it diligently next you want to apply the appropriate principles and rules to your budget and we say appropriate here appropriate because you want to ensure that you're using it in the right way you're using it in a way that God intends for you to use it. And so, you know, you want to ensure that you're doing that. As Rene said, and what we see in Proverbs, you need to know the condition of your flocks. You need to track your investments, track your expenses, review and adjust. A lot of persons don't know how much money they have, how much money they owe, when, when, when certain payments are due. It's yours to steward. You need to know the state of it, right? If you have debt, you have to know the balance, right? That, those, those things are non-negotiables in terms of tracking, right? And then, of course, review and make adjustments at a reasonable period. It doesn't have to be weekly. It can be monthly or quarterly, depending on what, what puts you in the best position. So now in terms of budgeting, we wanted to share this example. There are actually multiple schools of thought. There's also the 50, 30, 20 rule. There's a 60, 10, 10, 10, 10 rule. Like it, it, this is just an example. This is, this is one that we used in the past. So we thought I would share it here. We actually don't quite stick to this in the same way anymore because we're at a different state in our finances. But let's say we were using the 70, 10, 10, 10 rule. 10% 10 is our tithe. In our case, we tied on gross, but you know we will we'll get to that discussion after we, we start QA. 10% can go to savings and investments, 10% can go to debt repayment. Now the caveat here, let's say that we're in a really bad position in terms of debt. 
we may want to look to increase this debt amount. It could be 15% or 20%. It means maybe we have to minimize our needs and wants. But the point here is that you want to have a minimum amount. At one point, we were investing close to 50% of our salary. But when we were prioritizing debt repayment, we were putting even we, we were putting a large amount to debt repayment as well. So the season may call you to change these these numbers around. The tithing wasn't wasn't negotiable for us. Saving and investing wasn't negotiable for us. So we had at one point about two million dollars worth of debt, and we 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 just prioritized you know paying it down as much as possible as soon as possible when we got proceeds from our investments we applied that to the debt as well so you know de depending on the approach you choose to take whether the debt snowball or the debt avalanche you want to now apply some strategy to clearing the debt but of course you need to know the state of the debt which is why we said do that inventory write it out look at the interest rate how much is left to be paid etc um let me actually just go into a little bit more here. A common question that we get is, should I clear debt or invest? It depends, right? In my opinion, not financial advice here, in my opinion, if it is that you have, let's say that you, you just started to, to repay a loan and the loan is five years. Let's say it's, a, it's an unsecure loan and you're taking it for five years. You now have that monthly payment for five years. For at least the first two to two and a half years, you're repaying mainly interest. It would benefit you to pay down that debt sooner than later um, before you allocate a certain amount to investing. But let's say that you're able to, to, to get a certain return from your investments, which will allow you to even clear the debt faster, then it may make sense to invest. So you want to assess how much you're repaying with the debt. You want to assess what, what the opportunity cost is in your investments and then make that decision. Now, if you're on the tail end of the debt, let's say that you're in year four, you've already paid all of that interest for that loan. And if you, pay, if you have two more years to go to repay that loan, it's not going to be, there's not gonna be an incentive to repay it any faster because you've already paid the interest so then it may make sense to just continue to take your time and pay it off. Now, there is a, there is a, a psychological aspect here that sometimes we just want to be debt free. Like we just, we, we, we don't, we don't want to be in debt. Um, it's something that gives us, you know, sleeplessness, et cetera. Then that, that in itself is a greater incentive to repay it. However, if it is that that part is not a factor for you and you look at that debt and you say, well, there's not going to be any incentive for me to pay it off sooner, then you can allocate your funds to investing and then take the two years to pay that off. And then now the money that you're paying on the debt can be moved to, to, to investing, right? So hopefully that situation makes sense. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments, right? This, this final part in terms of wants versus needs um, you want to ensure that you are moderate in terms of wants, right? Needs are needs. Now, the question where needs are concerned, do I need to live at, at, at a house that costs a certain amount to, to maintain or a certain amount for rent? That is between you and the Lord, I would say. <laughs> I mean, because I think that we believe the Lord is so intentional even in where we live. So if the Lord has called you to a certain place at a certain season, I would necessarily worry about the initial cost in that regard, but also know that the Lord wouldn't call you to a place that would put you in, in, in a bad position or a position of debt, right? So sometimes our own emotions may cloud our judgment and we may want to live somewhere or drive a certain car based on our own emotional needs or our our desires to fit in. So we want to, to, to ensure that we're not in that place and that our needs are actual needs and wants are brought to a point where we can say a want means if it is that I'm on a crunch, the want can can wait. Right? If it's a need, I need food, I need shelter. 
um, I don't need to eat at this particular place on this particular date every week. That's more I want, right? Especially if that is going to put me over my budget for my food, right? So think about it that way. And I mean, what we have done is we give ourselves room. We allocate a certain amount in terms of an allowance each month. And we can do with that what we wish. And it's, it's, it's outside of the budget. Well, it's in the budget, but it's, it's, um, it's to the point where that amount says, okay, I can spend this any way I wish. And I don't have to worry that I'm putting us out in terms of our, 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 our allocation for the month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, most importantly, you want to apply the method that works best for you. So we with everything that has been said um we want you to to first and foremost remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you the ability gives us all the ability to make wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to to our fathers it is about god guys it is about him keeping his word keeping his covenant so when we, when we speak about stewardship, when we speak about money management, when we speak about honoring God with your resources, with your finances, etc., it comes down to his word, his covenant, and, and us playing our part in bringing his kingdom here on earth. So we close with that in terms of our presentation as i said we're going to take a short break just five minutes and then, and then we're just going to go into the q a right. so post all of your questions thank you guys for being here to this point we want to get into the discussion now there's a lot that we spoke about a lot of things to discuss right because as we learn these principles we need to now kind of work them out and see what the lord may want us to do I will say even before we go, the Lord may call us to do different things depending on where we are, right? So we're going to go on a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome to Learn, Grow, Invest. This is Jermaine and I'm Renee MacDonald, the co-founders of this community. So we started our investment journey just a few years ago and it is when we sat down with some friends talking about investments we realize, hey, so we know a little bit about investing, but at this table that we're sitting at, there are persons with different experiences, different yeah. strategies, and we thought this would be a great thing to emulate by creating a Learn, Grow, Invest community. So that's what we've done starting from a WhatsApp 2017. Group. It started with a <laughs> WhatsApp group, then it went to you know a Twitter page, a YouTube page, Channel, channel and IG group and so much more so we are here to help you know persons become better at investing to become better in their you know personal development goals in just as many areas as we can cover because we believe that investment is not separate it is not right. separate from our lives so you know we don't we don't invest and then we go do something else it's it, it's a part of who we are so we invest our time we invest our money we invest our resources That's and great. we believe it should be all done to, to the, the glory, glory of god. god so we actually dedicate and commit this community to him and we start each meeting with a word of prayer because we believe that if God remains our focal point, then we will ultimately realize this, the success that we're hoping to achieve as investors. So we are not investors, then we're Christians. It's one and, one and the same for us. So we welcome you to be a part of this community. We welcome you to share your own experiences, your expertise, and help us become better as well. So we're asking you to share this video. We're asking you to like this video, no matter where you've seen it and help us grow as a community and in our in and in parting our final word to you is remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth join us as we continue to learn grow and invest together
Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, guys, thank you for still being here with us. <laughs> all right, so let's go through all the questions. Thank you for posting them. And thank you again for those who are joining us for the very first time. All right, so we're going all the way back to the top. Um, Nikki B is asking if this will be available today. Yes, that's actually why we're on YouTube and not our usual Zoom. So you can watch this anytime. No, there will be some talking, the, the, the breaks in it, etc. But I think that would be okay. Yes. We'll put up chapters at the end of it so that you can easily navigate the video and go back to the area that you want to see. We'll also be taking the video um, we'll be doing the presentation over and putting it on our Learn Grow Invest Academy that you can, you know, purchase at a later date. And we'll be adding some more content to it and, and some Oracle other stuff. And downloadables, yeah. etc. So just look out for that. If you're a part of our communities or if you follow us on social media, then you'll definitely see when that comes out. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Hi, everyone. Really, really good to see everyone here. Hopefully those who are seeing the blurry screen, it's sorted out. As I said, just ensure that you'll see what, what looks like a gear icon to the bottom right. Just click on that, ensure that you're streaming in at least 720p or 1080p, and that should, that should be better, all right? So Marvin was asking, what is the difference between tithing and sacrificial gifting? Tithing, in my opinion, is what you do consistently each month. For example, from salary, a sacrificial gifting may be a one-off event. It may be something that the Lord leads you to do for a number of occasions, for a number of different reasons, so they're not the same. Um, it's It would be similar to this, the sacrificial gifting would be similar to maybe like the first route in that case, where it's the first of your harvest. The sacrificial gifting may be just the Lord calling you to give a particular you know cause um or so on hopefully that helps you have anything to add to that right no i think i think you covered it okay. so um Soph would have would have stated that her take on this and this um she was referencing tithing um is that the instructions of the one tenth was a part of the old testament this is similar to the burnt offerings that were done however when jesus died for our sins, we became free. And she continued to say, continued on to say that one ten is just a guide. We use our conscience to decide for what we can afford. Now, um, there was more. She said, remember, we're saved by, by faith, grace. We're saved by grace, not by works. And that is true. However, um, we, we were having a conversation in, in the comments. And I, I did say, you know, how does that approach, if we're going to say that that um, we give what we can afford, um, how does that approach stretch our faith? Because a, a part of tithing is about is about stretching our faith. It's about putting our faith in God above what, what we think. Because remember that his, his ways are, are higher. His ways, his thoughts are higher than ours. And so sometimes we may think that we can afford X, but the Lord is saying that, that we can afford X plus Y if we submit it to him. And I understand. Um, so did go on to, to say that she's currently in a country where where um, like 1% of persons are, are Christian. So there's not per se a church for her to give to. So she chooses to give. Um, to a charity instead, and she believes that the Lord is flexible in, in, in terms of um, how he receives 
how he receives that gifting. No, um, <laughs> no, it's it is understandable um, and and true. And I think I would have said as much in the comments that where it is that you are not able to give it the regular way. Um, and the Lord has led you to give in a different way. Yeah. If it is that, for example, you don't have a home church, then you wouldn't, I mean, giving, in that case, I think it would be okay. Um, because, I mean, again, each, it, <laughs> I'm just, the, the reason why I have this look on my face is the God is flexible part. It's just a really unusual <laughs> way to think about God. But, um, okay. um but God is not inflexible. So yeah, I, I get it. Um, so in, in Soph's case, if it is that she doesn't go to, she she doesn't have a home church and she gives to, to, to maybe a charity consistently and that's her tithe, um, I would say if you process that with the Lord, you've prayed about it and the Lord has confirmed that that's what you should do, mm -hmm. I believe that's okay. Because um, because ultimately it is about giving to his house, giving to his kingdom. So if, if the, the charity that you're giving to, the, the organization that you're giving to is indeed a, um, a faith-based, it's a kingdom organization, then you are giving to his house and, yeah. and you are honoring his word by doing so. So we're not here to, we're not here to tell you if it's right or wrong, we're just here to share what, what has been revealed to us through the word, what the word says, it says what it says, and um, just understanding that in in our personal relationships and our personal situations, um, the Lord may lead us differently yeah. to accomplish the same goal. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So um, the next question well, let's get to this one here. Let's see them in order. So um, I think James is asking, will the scripture references be available? Yes. So those who would have registered, um, if you didn't register, I think the registration link is in, 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 in the description of this video. Register, and then we'll send out an email for with just all the references that we used. Um, we didn't get to finish that in time for the session. We can send out all the scriptures, of course. You can rewatch the video, make your notes, etc. Right. Um, I just want to, to pause a little bit here because as we were as we were answering the questions mm -hmm. about tithing earlier, some more questions came sure. in. So I just wanted us to address those. Um TNT Mom asked, How do you differentiate between tithing and giving to a cause? Is there a difference? Um I think so. I, I think. I think we sort of addressed it just just now. There is a difference in, in our opinion. Um, tithing is, is specific to giving back to the kingdom of God, giving giving to the Lord, we're giving to his house, right? Um, a cause, specifically his house. Specifically, right? And it's not because God needs the money. It is about, it is about the condition of our hearts. Are we willing to trust him? with this amount and see what he will do with the rest and, and i mean the church in in its in its in its traditional sense is not a poor profit yeah so it needs its its members to to contribute to accomplish the purposes of the church now right if it is that you believe that your church is not stewarding its funds well then that's 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 a different matter right and again as we were saying earlier and when we're talking about generosity and giving, if you believe that your church is misusing funds, that's a matter to be addressed. That's a matter to speak to the leadership. That's a matter that maybe the Lord is 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 telling you to move away from that church, right? Because right. again, that wouldn't be just in his in his eyes. But tithing versus charitable giving, to me, it's it's not either or. It's both. Mm -hmm. Tithing is definitely something that we think you should do, and you give you know, um, in just being generous, right? Hopefully right. that helps. Yeah, hopefully. Um, Cash Wayne said that stretching our faith sounds more like sacrificial, like the sac sacrificial giving. Now, let me explain why I don't, I don't see it that way. <clears throat> Jermaine mentioned earlier that if we had time, we'd share our testimony, right? Now, I... I was not I was I was not like raised in I was not raised a Christian like you know the the traditional home 
um, and having all, all the Christian knowledge and precepts and church every Sunday and, and, and no, none of that. Church every week, none of that. So it was occasionally going to church, acknowledging that that God is, is real, but I did not have a personal relationship with God. I got saved in 2014, June 2014. And the day I got saved is the same day that Jeremy recommitted his life to the Lord. And we have not turned back since, right? No. Towards the end, I'm sorry, towards the end of that year, maybe in about October, our church issued a tithing challenge. Now, this would be the first time in my life that I would even consider tithing, right? I'm, I'm working, I'm earning. And of course, the, the I'm sitting in church and I hear the, the challenge issued. I hear the, the challenge issued and immediately I, I feel like that nudge in my spirit, like, yes, you're to do this. It's time for you to do this. And I lean over to Jermaine and I say, um, I think that we're supposed to do this. Now, understand, at this point in our lives, I was the only one with a consistent income. Jermaine had closed, closed his business the year before and he was now going to school. So we had one income and we were, and we were funding a university education. So I'm like 10% no to come out of the money that we're already trying to make the ends meet with seemed kind of rough. So I said, okay, all right. I leaned over to him and said, I, I think we should do this. And he said, well, you know, if the Lord's saying it, then Let's do it. we have to do it. We're, we're going to do it. So we said, all right, we're going to do it. I sat down and I wrote down everything. I wrote out all the expenses and I put the tithe there, the 10% gross, put it at the top. And when I totaled everything, I'm like, this is not possible. <laughs> this, this cannot work. This is this is ridiculous. Um, I spoke to, I even spoke to friends who, who were like, um, they weren't in the Lord at the time and they were like, well, so so why are you giving why are you giving so much money to the church? Just just don't do that. But I knew what the Lord had said at that time to me, to us, and we had committed to doing this thing. So we said, all right, you know what? We are we are going to do it because the Lord has said we should do it. And we and and we did it. Go go ahead. We went ahead and, and we started tithing. The very first, oops, <laughs> the very first month that I did that tithe, I cried. Like real eye water cried because I could not see how ends would meet. I could not see how we would how our bills would be paid the month. Right? But I cried before the Lord. I cried to the Lord and said, God, I don't know why you, you have me doing this now. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. It was, it was a four-month ch tithing challenge. The second month came, and it was still hard for me to send that money for the tithe. But it, it was a little bit easier than the first month because... We got through the first month, right? By the third month, I had no issue sending my tithe. I'm paying my tithe. Why? Because God provided in the first and second month. And when I say provided in a very practical way, that business that I told you, Jeremy, closed the year before, people were now paying us for things that were done a year and two years before that we weren't, we weren't pursuing them for, but they paid us. And I'm like, okay, that must be God, <laughs> right? So he was providing and he was allowing us to get through without, without being diminished in terms of our already modest lifestyle at the time, right? So by the fourth month, Jermaine secured a job. He secured an internship based on the schooling that he was doing and he was he was able to move on from from that internship into a job that was that was 
pay him even more than I was getting getting paid, right? And so that is what I mean when I say tithing stretches your faith because the truth is when you are tithing, it doesn't always add up on paper. It doesn't always look like it can be done. But God is the one who brings the increase and God is the one who makes the difference because I truly, truly believe and we have lived it that he can do more with the 90% than we can do with 100%. Okay. So I'll add to that. So every we, We've been doing our budget consistently every year for maybe the last three to four years. Every year when we sit down, so we plan for, we plan for the coming year from about October. So October every year, we're getting all of our expenses down, making our plans for vacation, our plans for charity, any anything that we may want to achieve in terms of investment goals. When we do our budget, we say, okay, we have a gap of X. And every year we, we, we kind of put that before the Lord and we say, Lord, you know, we've prayerfully gone through this budget. We've done everything we know we need to do. We've cut everything that we think we need to cut. There's still a gap. And we have been able to achieve pretty much everything that we have set out to accomplish in the past three to four years because it's either our, our investments have done better than we thought. Mm -hmm. We've had additional income streams that maybe we didn't plan at the start of the year but have worked out throughout the year. And so the thing that has been consistent for us from that testimony Renee shared in 2014, we have been tithing for eight years mm -hmm. straight there are seasons where the lord has called us to tithe more i think the most that we've tithed is about 20 percent and i mean we we just go as the lord leads us right mm -hmm. um so the tithe into to go back to the original question for me the tithe is something you give consistently from your income and there there are offerings right it says tithes and offerings you can give an offering that is just let's say that you know for example like our church was doing a building fund we can give to that fund it's not a tithe right it would be an offering if you are visiting a church and they're raising funds for something you can give in that way so there are many ways to give but to us the tithe is the minimum to answer the question whether or not it should be gross or net your income is 100 percent Right. So the tithe should be 10% of whatever it is that you have listed as your salary. Now, taxes is something that we have no control over, right? So you 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 pay your tithe from gross. It, well, that, this is what we do. Let, let me say what we do. <laughs> yes. And you prayerfully ask the Lord what you think you should do. So we tithe from gross. And so I get it that when you do 10% tithe, the numbers don't add up, right? So if you are doing a 50, 30, 20, or at 70, 10, 10, 10, you're like, well, the rest of the percentages don't add up because if I tithe from gross, what's left isn't 90%. It's like right. 70 something percent. Right. That's okay. You, you simply, the tithe is 10% and you divvy up the net now for the, for the, the, um, 10, 10, 10. the rest. Yeah. Right. Right, absolutely. And and really, I, I can share this openly, what what kind of shifted my mindset in terms of net versus growth, because honestly, I was tempted to do net first because I was like, maybe that's a little, little bit more manageable. But someone said to me, you, you're you paying the government on your growth. growth. <laughs> yeah. Why should God get any less? And I was like, wow. That is so true. That is so true. He truly, um, he truly deserves our best in everything. So, so that is what con convicted me, yeah. and um, I shared it with with Jeremy, and, and we agreed. Gross it is. And and remember, we said earlier, what we think or what we measure is we ask ourselves a question: which position or which decision gives God the most glory? In right. that case does gross or net which one gives god the most glory think about it that way and see how the lord leads you so marvin he had, he had made a statement earlier that stewardship for me is being kind and helping others in no i don't think that's it i think that was fine there's a question that you asked marvin 
um, this one where it says number three, not standing collateral for others, isn't that contrary to good stewardship? Um, so can you rephrase that question? I'm not sure if you are agreeing with us or you're, can you rephrase it please if you're still here? Thank you very much. Let's go through. Um, I see Charlene in the comments. Hi, mm -hmm. coach. Uh, so Sophie's saying, um, I've also I've also chosen to give to charities of my choice and not necessarily a church. Generosity take many forms. Oh, we we, we yeah, addressed this one charity. already. Yeah, we, we okay. Um, Marianne is saying people feel as if charity has to be within the four walls. So, I mean, I think we, we address this as well. To us, it's not either or, it's both. And that's why we say you want to budget for generosity. You want to seek out opportunities to be generous. Now, honestly, if you were to ask me if we're generous, Renee will tell you, I'll always feel like there's more that we can do. Right. And for us, um, believe it or not, these classes that we do, for us, it's generosity because this this is it takes us time to prepare it it took us maybe well I, I can't measure the time but it took us a long time to prepare the content the resources to 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 put the stream together what we're giving now so for us it's generosity right so you want to give as much as you can in in whatever ways the lord is calling you so for us this is us using our gifts and our talents for the furtherance of the kingdom we're hoping that at least one person can walk away from this with a new understanding of what the word says about money and they'll see a tangible change in their finances as a result of this session and we do you know free classes like this every quarter because we want to give back as much as we can now is it that we do we we save up some money or the money that it would have cost us to put all of this together and donate that to somebody instead no that is something that persons can debate for us when we create content like this it is here for as long as youtube exists potentially thousands of persons can watch this and be impacted by it so we believe doing it in this way ultimately you know serves the greater good in that regard and so for us this is how we are generous in addition to seeing where there's opportunities to help our family seeing where there's opportunities to help our friends etc all right, so hopefully that helps. All right. All right, so um, Marvin was asking, and I think this was in, with respect to generosity, in a social media age, should our gift be public or private? There's a school of thought that once you gift in public, it opens the opportunity for other individuals to give to the cause. Now, this, again, I mean, guys, you'll hear this from us over and over and over again. How is the Lord leading? <laughs> it has to be something that is that is prayerfully considered because you'll also hear um, when when you're giving the, the left hand, the right hand should know what the left hand is doing, and so persons will say you should not publicize your giving, your your gifts, right? Um, but it does depend on on what the cause is you'll notice that for corporate giving it will always be publicized and that is based on what the regulations and the laws say and how they can um, how it impacts their taxes etc etc that that's from a corporate standpoint from a personal standpoint there's absolutely nothing wrong with just giving and nobody has to know there's also nothing wrong um depending on on the situation of course, there may be situations where you can say, hey guys, I'm working on this initiative. Um, would you like to assist? No, we, for us, <laughs> we believe in, in protecting as best as possible the integrity and, and the dignity of the persons who are, who are receiving, right? Because not, not everyone will be comfortable with their, with their status yeah being blasted on on social and, media and, and that's also unfortunately because how we view those who need um donations or those who need um our our generosity so what we'll typically do because you know renee was pretty much alluding to it we we try every quarter every quarter as a community to give a donation depending on who we're giving to 
we may announce it, we may not, but we'll share it in our group. We say, this is what we're trying to accomplish. We'll share it with the group for transparency to say, okay, this is the amount we raised. This is who we gave it to. We'll share the photos now within the group, not publicly so that those who would have donated can see where their monies were directed. But when we've given publicly, we may share the items as an encouragement Right. for others to give as well because the, the the perspective about it marvin that i'd like to highlight is that sometimes we really don't know how how little it takes to make a difference right if there's 122 people on now if each of us gave a thousand dollars to a cause right now that may change somebody's life for three months right so sometimes if we don't take the opportunities to share and encourage others to give and be generous they may not think about it and sometimes it's not that they're mean but sometimes you get caught up just in your life so you seeing that learn grow invest you know speaks about giving consistently and and being generous you see marvin share that okay we're able to help this school or we're able to donate some tablets that me seeing Marvin post that would be an encouragement for me. Now, there may be persons who say you're just showing off. If it's not the truth, I wouldn't worry about it. Right. Right. So if you know in your heart you're doing it to be generous and to encourage, then people will say what they want to say. I tend to focus on what's true. If it's not true, I don't I don't really worry about it too much. Absolutely. All right. So Marion stated that her financial status is basically f that she made an investment and it failed miserably like thank you even for being bold enough to share that publicly yeah. marion um she then said though half of her pay is on the loan with nothing to show for it how does she bounce back from this she's feeling hopeless um marion do not be discouraged um we maxed out our credit cards which which was more than or a monthly salary, maxed it out, took a five-year loan to clear the card, maxed out the card again three months later. Um, so we had the loan to pay plus another maxed out card to, to recover from. So gaining interest every month. Gaining interest every month. And that's when we realized that we had to take our finances seriously, right? So what I'll say to you, if you're already on the path to repaying the loan, it's I would be looking at again that 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 situation I mentioned earlier. How much time is left, right? Ask the Lord for opportunities to either increase your income in the short term, or to use your existing income to maybe generate a little bit more through some form of investing to be able to either clear the debt down faster, or it could be that you know you just need to ride out that 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 tenure for the loan. And I find that, you see, when, when you have to pay down a loan from start to finish after you get to a point of, of, of realizing that maybe you didn't make the best decision, that's the most sobering thing ever. You see, when we cleared that five-year loan, we said we would never do anything like that again. Now, do we take, do we, do we take loans to invest? Yes, we do, but we do it within a certain amount and it is always something that we repay within two to three months right so my 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 encouragement to you marion go through your budget see what opportunities there may be to either increase income maybe if if refinancing the debt makes sense you can look at that as well it doesn't always make sense it depends on your particular situation and so i mean I'd want to see how we could help you in some way. I don't know. Um, I'd DM, send us a DM or send us an email, Marion. Let's see how we can help you, maybe even figure things out. I'd like to see what, what we can do for you. Okay. Right. And um, to, the, to the point about having made an, an investment that failed, that is, that is not uncommon. It's not uncommon. Um, but There's that no such is, thing as a risk-free investment. So. But that is also one of the reasons that this community exists we we truly believe that learning is the key to successful investing and so we we put out this content about about investing we we put out content about learning and personal finance and teaching persons 
about these various aspects of financial management because when we when we learn when, when we are educated in these areas we're able to make better decisions it doesn't take away all the risk but it does decrease the risk in in um invaluably <laughs> like in a, in a significant way it does decrease the risk so we we encourage you to to take heart though though this that particular investment may have failed hopefully it doesn't turn you away from all forms of investing right and yeah there is hope because like we, we've been through it i wish there we could hope. share publicly <laughs> just how much there money we have lost through bad decisions so it, it's it's definitely not all lost all right so um alistair asks um do you suggest covering all debts before saving or investing and how can a person satisfy or be satisfied with what they have well, man. Yeah, I, I think we kind of answered the first part already. Hopefully, you are here. It really depends on the state of the debt, uh, where you are in that. Again, to me, it's not either or. I'd say both. If you can invest, invest. Uh, we are at an interesting point now in terms of our, our economy. We see interest rates are rising. So, we really, I think, should be investing to try and combat just inflation and these, you know higher rates so if you can do both do both if it's not feasible to do both prioritize clearing the debt once the debt is cleared you can use that money to invest um being satisfied in what you have i i refer you to 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 philippians right paul says he knows what it is to abound he knows what it is to do without he has found the secret right the secret to being content and that secret is pretty much christ right um you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what the verse was about, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people use I can do all things as this this thing to say, That's I can wrong. do anything I want to do. <laughs> but it's really Paul saying I can do anything, meaning I can be content in all situations regardless of where, where I find myself through Christ who strengthens me. Being, being content when you have no reason to, I believe is a strengthening of the Lord. So to make you look past what, what your situation is and for you to have hope, right? And for you to have peace and joy with what you have. You can be content and be in a mountain and debt knowing that the Lord will take you through it, right? Because remember the parable of talents. Once we start to steward well, it will bear fruit, right? That's what the word promises us. And we can tell you personally that we have seen that, that it is possible to come back from that. It is possible to increase your net worth and to thrive. But it just means that we have to maybe be a little bit more intentional about it. And so again, as Renee said, that's why we are here. Um, so you really want to, to assess that situation first to, to know whether or not you should invest or clear the debt first look at what what we said earlier in the video as a sort of guide mm -hmm. and you know take it from there i'm and sorry if i could you no it's fine and i just wanted to add in terms of that second question about about being satisfied um i did a, a study on first timothy six um and i actually did a live on our IG page about it to share what, what came out of, of out of that study for me. And I do encourage you to watch it because it, it speaks to some of some of this contentment um, with what we have. They, and, and that in is a part of the danger. When we're not content, that it is one of the the off ramps that, that will lead us to walking away from the faith yeah. because then we start to seek after the things that are not of God. We start to, to, to seek after um, the lifestyles that we're seeing, etc. We, we start seeking after things that we are envious of That's or coveting. Mark 14, right? Mark 14, 19. I think so. Okay, okay. Yes. So we start coveting and we and then we, we we turn away from the faith because we're no longer contented with what what has been provided for us and we are no more fixated on what it is that that others have or that that we want to get. And also um the, the peace that passes all understanding is what comes from Christ. The the joy and the peace 
um, that we are seeking and that, and that we have when we are content in every situation, that comes from the, the Holy Spirit. It's literally a fruit of the Spirit. So when we dive deep into, into God, when we, when we take that time to build relationship with him and, and to truly align with him, align with our identity in him, align with our purpose in him, and start, start acting and living out how he has called us, to, what he has called us to do, when we are doing that, we can be content because he has made us for certain things. Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship. And, and he has created us in Christ Jesus to do the good work that he has set out before us, right? So in advance. So he has already prepared it. The problem is that we want to go, go on our own path and we want to we want to walk on we want to walk on on the the broad road when he's saying, No, come, I am the, the lamp onto your feet. I'm taking you on, on this path that I made specifically for you. And we tend to walk, we, we tend to, to shy away from that because it's a, it's sometimes more challenging to, to our nature, which it has to be because our nature is not God. <laughs> our, our nature is not godly um, just by, just originally. So we have a sin nature, not a godly nature. And so when we are transformed by Christ, it is, it is in the renewal that comes it is, in, it is in the transformation that we are able to take off the old man and put on the new man and truly walk out what it is that he has called us to do and be content in it. So to add to, to that, Mark 4.19, one of the verses that I think about if I find myself being too caught up and I'm losing my joy, losing my, my contentment. Mark 4.19 says about the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful. So sometimes we can get so caught up in all the other stuff, right? We stopped seeking the kingdom first. We stop, you know, listening to the Lord. We stop being obedient. And then so the word begins to get choked out, right? And then our lives just become unfruitful. Right. Um, we're going to try and go through. I know more questions are coming. In. We're going to try and answer as much as we can because we're going to wrap up in maybe about 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so says number two, Jermaine is hard to navigate. Can we really avoid being complacent if one chooses to invest in an index fund, for example, that may include companies that sell alcohol or cigarettes? As so, uh, you may not agree with my perspective mm -hmm. here. What I think, so it's important to know what you're invested in. And that's why I'm not necessarily the biggest fan, fan of an index, especially if I don't know everything that that index is invested in. Because depending on the country you're in, you may not have all the details. It may say, you know, real estate or retail or, you know, manufacturing. You may not know the type of manufacturing company, for example. I believe in knowing exactly what I'm invested in. If what I'm invested in does not honor the Lord, then I don't believe I should invest in it. That's just what my, my conviction is because I believe there is, there is a way to stick um, to what the Lord wants me to do and still be successful. Now, I've spoken to Christians so who has no problem to invest in in, in, in in companies that sell cigarettes and alcohol, no no issue to invest in companies that, that promote gambling, for example. Personally, we don't do it. And that is our conviction because the Lord impressed upon us the importance of investing a certain way. So that is something where, again, take it to the Lord in prayer if you if you are hearing from the Lord and the Lord says that it is permissible for you, you can go ahead for me personally. If it is that the company is is harming either someone else or the, or, or the environment, like if there's some form of harm in my mind that doesn't seem like something the Lord would want me to do. Now I understand that the lines are blurred and if it is that you don't know, you don't know, but if you know, you have to act on the knowledge that you have. I hope that makes sense to you. Right. 
I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> I think there was um, there was someone else who asked a similar question later on, so I think that would have addressed it. Yeah. All right. Um, Marvin asked us to define generously, and I, I take it that this is when we were speaking about generosity. Generosity to me, if you think about the story of the prodigal son and the father, I think that's a good example. The father was generous, right? Um, generosity usually brings us to a point of having to think if we really want to give that much i don't think it's an amount right because look at the story of the widow when when jesus said she gave more than those who were wealthy so i can't say to you marvin that if you give ten thousand dollars you're generous when you have 10 million but somebody who only have fifty thousand gave ten thousand they are more generous than than somebody who has 10 million and give the same amount so it is a personal thing it is something that i don't believe i don't believe generosity is somebody that it is something that anybody can boast that they are generous because there's usually something for some people it's not money some people can give money and it's no big deal as we said but maybe they don't give their time so it, it's a personal thing i think the lord i would ask for conviction to be more generous or strive to be generous mm -hmm. um that's that's how i would answer it but it's not a number right right or it's and not a percentage it, it is about the heart it is about and i think um sonia sonia just said it too <laughs> um it's about the heart posture i agree um we had another question from nikki b who asked if the scripture that says do not throw your pearls before swine is about giving wisely now um Versus please seven. correct me if if i am wrong um if anyone else has any other perspective but the the reading and the studying that i've done on on this verse mind you it has not been the most extensive at this point it's matthew 7 verse 6. um the the reading that i have done on it though my understanding is that it was speaking to to precepts um and not not necessarily about actual pearls so it was talking about it was it was talking about um the the principles because right before that it said it the full verse says give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast ye your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you right so <clears throat> guys just just a quick tip here for persons who are interested in, in better understanding the word, um, a, a great resource is biblehub.com, B-I-B-L-E-H-U-B.com. Um, it provides the commentaries, it, it provides concordance, it provides many versions of, of the, the word, and it also allows you to, to translate to the original and um, Greek and Hebrew, etc. So it, it gives you a wealth of information on how to how to um understand and and read the the word yeah. so as i said what what i know of this verse it's not about it's not about riches it's not about it's not about general um giving in terms of finan finances it's about it's about um the the holiness of of god and the, the precepts of god are you sharing them with people who who have no appreciation for them, who yeah. are unholy. Yeah. Uh, for, for Marion, as I said, reach out to us. Uh, we're definitely going to pray for you um, as well, for you to receive the laptop that you're asking for. So Right. Yeah. And I, I put the email address in the chat, so feel free to, to utilize that. Okay. Uh, I think sometimes we're in, well, definitely agreed there, Marvin. And... Uh, Thank you for all of your, your feedback and, and questions. I think I think a lot of them you know the answer to, but you're asking to spark conversations. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Candice is saying that she allocates 5% to charity. I mean, that's we do a similar thing, except for us, we try not to have an amount because we, uh, unless the amount is um, a minimum, right? So sometimes we saw, especially during COVID where the Lord would have led us to help persons in ways we didn't plan, right? Yeah. A lot of it was, well, uh, well, yeah, a, a big chunk of it was outside of our budget. 
but you know persons were in a situation they, they they reached out in some cases they didn't ask we offered and we believe that it would have blessed them so i mean you want to just yeah. as we said look out for those opportunities we pray consistently for the opportunities and we give as we believe the lord is leading us there are sometimes persons reach out and we say no because we believe that it is not best to give in the way that they're asking as we said before so it's really for each person to assess the situation pray about it and then determine how the lord is leading you yeah this one no um, i think we'll we'll talk with marion yeah, yeah. Off here with that one which one so i, th so I think we would I have addressed, addressed that this as well about cool. the difference i think we addressed and this we addressed one as well the stretching of faith so um Natalie, right, I saw this one. Natalie was was asking, was was saying that there's always a need for persons who can't afford medical procedures. And essentially she wants to know how she would be able to start a fund um, where she invests her funds so that there's always money to give to the less fortunate. Like um, that's an awesome initiative um, and an awesome thought process. Um, I don't know if we can really give an, a, a blanket answer for that right now. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't know. I, but you can also email us with with that and let us let us respond. So to you. Let us have a conversation yeah. and and respond to you on that one. So I mean, again, um, see how the Lord is leading you to do it, right? Because I do believe that there would definitely be a great need for this. I would imagine, just know me in in my own flesh, thinking about it, that you may want to have some way. To determine who gets the donation, what's the criteria, what type of, of you know, procedures are you funding, etc. So you want to put, you want to ask the Lord to give you a framework for it, and right. it's definitely worth pursuing if you believe the Lord is in, is is inspired to do so. All right. Nicholas is asking, can you explain how you submitted to God? Is it through prayer? So it starts with prayer, but submitting and when we use submit i think it's an excellent question by the way when how we submit our finances to god we start with prayer every time we sit down to budget we're praying every time we're going through each decision right because you can budget all you want when you get up and life happens you can blow that budget very quickly. Mm -hmm. You may say, okay, I'm not going to eat a certain type of food this month because it's not in my budget. And the two days later, somebody has a crave. I'm not calling any names. <laughs> and those cravings may go against what you budget for. Mm -hmm. And you know, something may come up. You may just have a desire for something that you didn't plan for. In those moments, you submit those to God as well. And so right. it's 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 really speaking to a lifestyle of constant conversation with the Lord mm -hmm. about your finances and yeah. about your decisions that have a financial impact. And, and so, yeah, sorry. So I'll, I'll just add to that. So we, we do what we call purpose planning at a startup every year. And it's actually, uh, it, it's actually something that we offer as, as a session. Um, I don't know if any of our, any, any of our participants are actually in the channel, but but we have offered it through our other channel, Loving to the Max, which is for couples. Um, we offer it based on what we have learned over the years, um, and that purpose planning is essentially is essentially giving God the room to tell us what He wants us to do for the year, right? And so He will. Charlene says she's present. Yes, Charlene was a participant. So Char Charlene can tell you how it has impacted her. But it, it allows us to, to truly give God that room to, 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 to tell us what he wants us to do. And then we, we budget, right? So, so when the Lord says, do A, B, C, D, these are your focus areas. These are the these are the things that you are to pursue. You then you then um, plan your finances accordingly. So that is really where our budget originally comes from. And then um, we do that we do that monthly check in. Actually, we we do a weekly updating of our of our spreadsheets 
which is shared between the two of us. And then at, um, we do a monthly review to say, okay, how do we need to adjust? Are, are there anything, um, is there anything coming up that we, we did not plan for previously? Do we need to make any changes to our plan for this particular month? Yeah. So the, the reason why we check in weekly is because there are a lot of moving parts, right? We have a lot of things that we track and manage, right? Learn, grow, invest. Um, we may have, you know, finances relating to that to manage. We have our personal accounts. We have our joint accounts, we have our investments. So because of how many things we have to manage, we check in weekly to ensure that it's not this one long session at the end of the month. So it doesn't have to be weekly. That's we manage, just what works for yeah, us. We manage our finances together as well, where we don't separate, you know, his money, her money, you know, kind of thing. So it's that's the system that we worked out. Again, we actually covered that in a video on our Loving to the Max channel. So be sure to check that out. I wanted to just direct Matthew. Matthew, if you want to know how to save, I think there's a video on budgeting that we have on our channel. Check that out. Um, you want to you want to determine the amount, you want to automate it, and it really how much you can save is really based on your budget. So it really starts there. I'd recommend that you look for that video on budgeting on our channel and take it from there. Right. And um, Maria had asked about ask a similar question about yeah, man, so we answered that company term. and we would have we would have responded to that mm -hmm. uh okay and the next question is from rory is the snowball or avalanche method more effective in clearing debts i'd answered it in the chat oh you did <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, so he so the response was it depends on the debt and the state of the overall financial position so so jeremy would have briefly explain the, the snowball versus the avalanche and really if whether you're going from the smallest debt to the largest which is a snowball or the largest debt to the smallest um that's the avalanche it it genuinely does depend on where you are what you need to accomplish and what those what those debts look like because if you're it depends on what you're your counting as well. So for instance, you may have a mortgage, which is a large mm -hmm. debt, right? Some persons don't count that when don't don't count mortgage when they're looking when they're looking at their debts. They're more focused on the personal debt. So if they have like a higher purchase um, situation or they have personal loans or things like that, they will they will look at those and, and seek to clear those. But if you're including things like your mortgage and your car loans, then it looks a little different, you know? Um, so so those things are are to be taken into consideration. Uh, Rory then went on to ask if, we, if you can have too. too much in your emergency fund. And um, Jeremy gave a response to say it depends on how you, how you've assessed your potential emergencies. Um, and the general recommendation is three to six months of, of your typical expenses um, and invest the rest into something that, that, that you can cash out on if needed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. again, with an emergency fund, I mean, if you plan for every possible emergency, you wouldn't have anything to invest. So it's something that just in case you lose your income, just in case there is an emergency, you'll have something to go to. Um, so I think three to six months is more than reasonable uh, because you're also thinking about the time value of money, you're thinking about inflation. So if you have cash sitting there, not being invested, not working for you, then you are potentially missing out there. It depends on where you are now, if you have a lot of money in investments then maybe you want to store more than three to six months that's okay it's a personal decision what we do is we keep our 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 emergency fund rotated in investments so we may invest it for a few a few weeks or months pull that back leave a certain amount if there's an investment opportunity that comes up that has a short time horizon we may invest it because then we're going to be that money is only going to be tied up for a few weeks. Now it does present a certain element of risk. What if we have an emergency, right? As we invested, 
that's why we always keep a, a cleared credit card. And I think that's the next question that Rory is, Rory is going to bring up. So I'll just go right into it. So Rory says, what, what do you think about the advice I heard not to use credit cards, even if it's paid in full every month, because on average we spend 20% more when using a credit card rather than cash or debit. To me, that's true. To me, you do tend to spend more when you use a credit card. We have definitely experienced that. Mm -hmm. You weigh that with, so to me, if it is that I'm getting cash back, the question is, let's say I get $10,000 cash back, but me using the credit card allows me to overspend by $500,000. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't make sense, right? So each person knows themselves. What's the limit for that credit card? Um, if you're able to to stick to your budget, right? If you have that budget, Rory, and you're sticking to that budget, I wouldn't be concerned about overspending because you're sticking to your budget. Now, a lot of persons budget and overspend in the budget because they're not budgeting <laughs> properly. Right. That's a different situation. That's different. In that case, they credit card is not making it worse your priorities are making it worse so what i would say there is that you have to know whether or not you are the type of person who is disciplined if you are disciplined then i think it's okay if you are not disciplined and you see where if you have such a simple way a credit card works a credit card is the difference between a person who might say well um no, I don't want to use this example. Thank you, Lord. I think I, I was going to use an example, and I think it might have offended someone, so I decided not to use it. I apologize for that. But if you sometimes the credit card causes us to spend a certain way because it's not money that's instantly leaving us. Like when we swipe the card, we don't see a change in our bank balance. Yeah, or when you click the, the buy button, you're, you're, not, you're not seeing the exchange. And, and so... It, that is really what allows us to, to overspend because it's just it's it's just figures on a paper or figures on a screen to us. It it doesn't it doesn't feel like money that you've you've earned and worked for because really it isn't. It's a it's a loan that you're taking every month. It's literally credit every month. Yeah. And and so if you're living on your credit card, you're living above your means. Um yeah. and and that is that is something to to address. So really at the very core of it, the base, the base response to this is is to understand your relationship with money. If there are, if there are areas that you need to address from an from an emotional spending perspective, from from um, an, a need to renew your mindset kind of perspective, seek to understand truly understand what, where it is that you stand with money and if there are areas that you need to address, and then you can see if it is that you need to if it is that you need to do away with your credit cards or if it can if you yeah. can manage it well um uh marianne i think we would have shared the email address and you shared it in the chat right yes man i did yeah. so i i think um marcos marvin sorry had restated his question and and guys, thank you so much for the support regarding oh, our testimony. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I, I see all of the, the comments supporting the, the testimony and confirming and saying yes, you um, you know, you have testimonies where God has been so faithful in terms of when you've tithed as well, when you started tithing as well. So I love that. Thank you so much for that support. So Marvin was saying, aren't we called to help others? And this may be by standing collateral for yeah. others. All right. Excellent question, Marvin. So Marvin, the, the, the way I see it is this, and when we're going through the presentation and preparing for it, I looked at the scripture, I read it. I saw, and I asked Renee if, if, if she agreed, the scripture was clear to say, don't do it for your neighbor, right? right? Or a stranger is the word it used. So I said to her, you know, is it does that mean that the word is permitting us to send collateral for a family member? What if it's a, a, a student loan for a child that wants to go to university and now the parents are going to be, you know, guarantor or something to that effect? I believe that is permissible. Now, trust me, Marvin, you 
you see it as helping a friend by standing standing collateral are you comfortable with that risk if the friend doesn't repay that's a question that i would ask you there because if the word says something explicitly and you want to be obedient to the word that means you don't do it right so it's this one is not a gray area kind of thing the word says don't do it and it's not the kind of thing to me where it seems like outside of the case where it's for your family because as i said it says neighbor or stranger now that is a part that that i look at i have been in situations I sued collateral for somebody, and I had to bear the burden of that debt. So I can tell you personally, you're helping them, and they leave you with the bill. If you want to help them by paying that loan for them. Report my credit history. I or couldn't ability, get a loan, so or ability to to get the mortgage, guys. When I when we have a system like that, we can get to secure your mortgage to be open. That's the same as a mortgage. That's not trying to say that that you know, like supposed to be a joint mortgage. So um, it's a it's a very good thing, and we I think Charlie said it in the chat earlier that if we truly if we truly obey the word of God, like it provides everything that we need for for good financial management, um, and it may not. We, we may look at it from a cultural perspective because it has become the cultural norm for persons to stand guarantee for others. But it's also become the cultural norm for a lot of people to have to pay the debts of others. Um, I remember a friend called me stressed out because he was he was guarantor for somebody's loan. The person left the country. The person stopped answering their phone. And the, what what I said to Renee when I found that scripture was many years after I found myself in that situation. And I said, if I knew this scripture, I wouldn't be in that situation. So again, I think it comes into what the word says. It comes into the context where it seems to be permissible when it comes to family. Right. But and, it and doesn't that is coming seem... from sorry, that's coming from the amplified version. And just a reminder that scripture that we're referencing is Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 6, 1 to 6. Right. Um, and when we read it in the amplified version, it it says it says outside of your family. It it does say it that way. So um that is something to to study deeper if if it is that you're you're so led. Mm -hmm. So um Tina K asks, what would you say to persons who want to learn how to invest, get wise counsel from experts and don't have the money to actually invest in themselves or pay to get that information well uh, Tina Kay, okay go ahead because as that that's why we're here yeah <laughs> like literally that's why we're here um this this channel is we do um, a lot of free content is dedicated to free yeah. content and we and we teach um about about investing etc and in our communities there there are many experts and there are also <laughs> it's no no quote unquote. There are actual yeah, experts, experts yeah. in our communities, in our Telegram group in particular, and um, they're they're very willing to share to share information. And we also have um, a listing of of advisors and brokers who we can um, share direct you to. Yep. So if it is that that you're interested, it's not something that you have to pay for to get the information. Um, we have playlists on on the channel. Just check them out to, if you want to get started, and um, that will that will put you in a yeah. in a good position. Join the community. Ask any question that you so desire. We are here to help. Yeah, and you can open an investment account with as little as five thousand dollars in Jamaica, and I know in some countries it's 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 even less than that amount to start an investment account. It doesn't matter. Um, the amount you start with, you just want to start. Right. 
All right. So um, persons were sharing their their thanks and gratitude for, for the presentation. Thank you guys for being Thank here. you so much for being here and participating with us. Um, uh, Marvin asked Definitely. if we would consider don't hosting. Don't give her any ideas, you know, <laughs> because... We wanted to do an investment conference, but we just haven't been able to get the planning off the ground. Pray for us in that regard, please. Yes. But we yes, have definitely yes. thought about it. We are definitely interested in, in doing that. And thank you for thinking of us in that way. Um, so. Small Timber had a question. Where, why did question. it jump? Just scroll back up. I'm so sorry. There guys. Okay. There All right. Um, Small Timber says, you guys don't separate finances, but can you suggest any tips to get your partner to be more financially responsible? Prayer. Yep. Prayer. Legit. Um, we both had seasons of financial irresponsibility. It has had an impact on our money. I'm not going to lie that we've set each other back in different seasons with different things, right? Yep. I had... A past habit that I would just, I had a small credit card, but every month I get paid, I would max it out on something that was not even remotely sensible, but it was, it was an addiction. It was something that I needed to be free from, spent it, that set us back. I think I hid that habit from Renee about a year and a half and maxed out that card, had to pay double to clear the card it took me a year to clear the card and from then i just learned that lesson we've had different seasons right Renee can share her story of us going overseas to shop and i tell the story all the time and i say Renee, close down the store <laughs> Renee, close down the store and we spent the remaining time after we got back from that trip recovering from the trip so we've had different seasons and the most important thing that I would say here, give grace to your partner. I think nobody is perfect with money. We might spend it in different way, right? Renee is a small purchaser. Renee will spend $500 each time she goes on the road, but I may spend $20,000 once per year and it may add up to the same thing or sometimes mine is more. I used to judge her to say that she doesn't stick to a budget, she's irresponsible, etc. until we got to that compromise to say, okay, this is an allowance that we'll give to each other. If you spend within the allowance, it's okay. Even if you don't spend within the allowance, we talk about it. We say, okay, how can we stick to what we have agreed because we want to get to these goals together? Um, if you can't, if you find that you can't speak to your partner directly because money is maybe a touchy subject, Pray about it, see, try to determine the best way to speak to them. Maybe it would be best for them to speak to somebody who they would listen to. Maybe they have a mentor or somebody they will maybe receive it better coming from. Um, sometimes I find that guys will listen to guys, women will listen to women. Sometimes. Um, sometimes. So that may help as well. But we have just, we make mistakes all the time. So we just, you know, go back to the drawing board, talk about it, try to work it out. If we've had a slip up, we give each other grace and we try to, to, to make it work. And we put systems in place to prevent the mismanagement of funds. So we automate as much as we can so that the amount we have to be irresponsible with is as small as possible. So if you don't believe your partner is financially responsible, Automate the investing, automate the savings, pay all the bills up front each month. And whatever amount is left, work out an allowance and say, okay, your allowance is $1,000 or $5,000 or $10,000. Whatever you do with that, it's okay. We won't track it. But then as it relates to the rest of the money, let me know where it goes so that we can do our budget appropriately. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, and um, just to help with that as well. I mentioned that we do have yeah, another sure, channel about, about couples um, and we do talk about marriage and money on that channel. So I'm going to share share a playlist about marriage and money and you can check that out and see if it's helpful for you. Great. Okay. Um, hopefully that, that answer was helpful, Small Timber. Um, 
I'll just, you know, highlight the things God gives us are his and we're to steer them well. That's exactly what we're talking about tonight. So we agree there. Um, read, read the collateral. I wouldn't recommend if you... Exactly. <laughs> Ex exactly, TNT, mom. Um, I couldn't have said it better, right? If you can't afford to repay the debt or you're not comfortable with, with potentially repaying it, but again that's cultural as we said the word says don't do it so i mean I, I don't know how you really compromise there um okay if we missed any questions let me know our coach is saying in my opinion the key to lending money or signing collateral is being able to survive financial yeah i think we're saying that as well um, I think we're almost at the end. Yes, I think that is it. And it's 8 30. Like, what good yep. time? Good Candace, time. Candace, Candace, thank you so thank you for everyone who is here. We really appreciate it. We we saw that we're doing free classes every quarter, and we're like, we're a Bible-based investment community, but we haven't covered the topic of biblical investing. We have to do it now. So I know it's not the most popular, but we're grateful that you guys are here. We believe that this is something that we all can get better at. And I think if everybody knew what the Bible said about money, if we follow those principles, then we wouldn't be in, in half of the troublesome situations we find ourselves in. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for being here. We really, really do appreciate your support. Uh, Tanil is praying for our conference. Yes, yes because, please, thank you. you know, um, just please pray for us. Pray for the community. Pray that we fulfill the Lord's purpose for it um i need help especially in that regard i sometimes can't contain myself i want to go ahead of where the lord you know would have us but we appreciate your support and prayers so yep yes yeah, so i i shared i shared the great we answered all questions yes we, we answered your questions yay <laughs> all right guys so we just want to say again thank you so very much um for spending this time with us we we trust that that you would have received some value from it i mean you're still here right <laughs> we trust that you would have received some value from it and we we truly pray god's richest blessings upon you as you continue to seek after him as you continue to seek to walk to walk um, well as a believer in Christ. So <clears throat> as you as you as you awesome. go through as you go through um, if there are any questions or concerns feel free to reach out to us. We are we are our open DMs and are available. open. <laughs> yes. Um, open and available and we truly truly do appreciate each and every one of you and um, we pray for you a great night and a great rest of the weekend. Yeah. Blessings to you. Be sure to share the video with a friend, especially someone who you know um, could, could, could benefit from this. Please like the video. Please don't leave unless you like the video. Mm -hmm. Thanks again to, to everyone who is here. Thank you, Sonia. Please, guys, go and check out Sonia's channel. Check out Charlene on Instagram. Thank you for everyone who is here. We appreciate everything that was said. I really hope that you get our heart in, in the discussion. It's really, you know, for you to have that conversation with the Lord, that relationship with him, and determine how best to steward what he has given us. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your night. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest.